start. I think she's not gonna make it the way she's doing it. <laughs> Welcome back, climbers. This is the finals of the Elite Japan Cup. And first, we have Miho Nonaka. She's gonna go against Aimori, the current defending champion of the Japan Elite Cup. And this is very exciting because Miho Nonaka is actually a boulder specialist. But she's in the lead finals of Japan Cup, and that's super exciting. Now, this start is really tricky. Um, she makes it look kind of easy, but there's a black tape on the right side, if you can see right now from your screen. You can't actually flag uh, or go across that part, which is a bit interesting. And um, that has a really high foothold on the right, which you will see later might be a little bit too demanding for certain shorter climbers. But we have Mio Nanaka here. She recently posted a video uh, saying that, you know, she's rejuvenated, she's renewed, uh, she's been training well, and she's with, uh, well, of course, a new sponsor in Adidas as well. Um, and, you know, she's rocking the cool 510s. If you want to see more, uh, you know, climbing shoes of pro climbers, I made a little recent video, which I can link in the comments and description. Oh, slight slip there. Uh, she has to be really careful. This section is a little bit... Um, bit uncomfortable even though the positions seem very conventional you can see the climbers like just having to kind of fret around trying to quite they're being quite precise with their feet and they have to because this isn't a very uh, straightforward starting section nice high right foot grabs into this left white loaf and she makes that cross look easier I think some shorter climbers might struggle on that I mean you know Naraka cruising she's looking really really strong I think uh, she's in good contention to uh, do very well and she did very well in the uh, Boulder Japan Cup so uh, I'll link that in the comments down below as well it's very very exciting and Futaba Ito won that and Futaba Ito is also in this competition in this final so she qualified and they're actually Boulder specialists but whoa Miho Naka comes under this crimp wow she's actually using the heel as well to make sure her body is balanced and has the weight distributed under that crimp very very nice I love how she's really smearing very intentionally with the right foot. You can see her really like kind of like squeezing her, um, her leather in. Oh, she cuts loose a little bit here to grab these big volumes. Um, these volumes are, I think these are new from x -Cal. Uh th These are huge. The texture is kind of rough and I actually got my skin really destroyed uh, by holding these holes in the new gym. But uh, yeah, I love these holes. These holes are great. This seems like a cool rest point for the climbers. This is Mio Naka, she's like the second one out. Oh, she has to reach over this blind left hand. That's actually harder than it looks. Because you can't really see that from the angle very, very well. But she's using the liberty to rest here. With two heels on. Finds a way to untangle herself. She's really like digging her left foot in. And I'm not sure how she's going to transition across, but it seems like these holds are good enough for them to rest a little bit. Comes with the right heel on the slopey white loaf hold. Those are kind of loaves by Unleashed Climbing. If you're a climbing holds nerd, uh, whoa, she makes that move super smooth. I love her style of climbing. I think previously we didn't really see this type of Miho no Naka in a couple of years you know her lead climbing has always been a little bit jaggery and as I say that she kind of gets her hand caught on the rope but now she seems super smooth and wow this is super impressive by Miho no Naka I like the little details she's doing comes with the left slope but that is hard to control Oh my gosh, she's just hanging there. Oh my god, that slope looks so bad from that angle. Oh my goodness. She's really trying to stay under. She can't actually get up the left. Oh, that move was a bit too ambitious and too big. Uh, it seems like she was actually quite patient. She seemed quite good. It looks like it caught Miho by surprise as well. It looks like she still had some in the tank and she knows it. She's a little bit disappointed. This start is a little bit tricky in my opinion. And yeah, she's having a second look. Um, she's holding on to this. Link's volume is kind of slopey, nothing really easy to grab that. And the first hole you have to grab with your left hand is this purple sloper. So yeah, it's indeed a little bit of a... Uh, honestly, a bit of a weird start. And once you get your foot off your counter, you know, you can't readjust, you can't do it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, dude. 
Oh, that is that is so that's kind of heartbreaking. If you let's have a closer look. So she, her yeah, her body was way too tilted to the left, and but the, at the same time, you know, you can't really back flag. So you can see her little body is. It's just not balanced at all. She doesn't really have a good foot position on the, the foothold. And the thing is, ideally you want to back flag your leg beyond this wall, but this black tape here is stopping you from doing that. Once you touch that, you're kind of counted out. So, I think she did... She... Yeah, she was, her, her arm was bent. She, she just didn't feel very confident on this first move. And Next, we have Futaba Ito, the winner of the Japan bouldering uh, cup for the women's. She flashed all four problems. Well, spoiler alert, I guess. Let's see how she does with the start. If you want to see her in action, boulder action, there's a video in the comments below. She starts left foot. Oh, okay. She lets, really sinks into the left with the left foot. Um, quite an interesting take on that uh, angle. But um, yeah, she makes it work and she's on her way. She's looking okay. I think once she gets past this problem, she should be in cruising mode. And that's what you want to do. And usually for lead climbers, uh, especially in competitions, you really want to attack the start. You want to attack the first... Uh, first section of the problems of the roots but these setters really kind of stop them from doing that you know they really slow you down from the get-go with like these tricky slopers tricky start positions and you don't have much room to really settle in and that's what the root setters kind of intend with because she's she will, she seems to be on form right now oh grabbing this under clink crimp is kind of tough um, I actually have those in my gym and those are not easy. She's actually using the ball hole on her thumb. Okay. <laughs> well, you do whatever you gotta do, man. Can't cut loose here, or yeah, she cuts loose here. I think another way of doing it could be getting a foot a little bit higher first. Um, but yeah, I think this is, could be more efficient anyway, because you want to get this rest. This is like a crucial rest point. Her heel looks like a little bit. On the wrong side of the hole, yeah, she has to adjust that. Um, once, she, once she gets this low, she should be comfortable. And she makes this. Okay, will she be able to land the crux where Miho slipped? She seems like. Okay, she seems quite stable for now, even though it looks like an awkward position. Uh, but she needs to find a way to address this white sloper. That is a tough. Oh, the, oh no, she slips! Let's have a look at that uh, again. Uh, and see what happened. Yeah, it seemed like her weight shifted all the way to her left foot. Um, she committed too much weight on the left, and that's why her right pops out. See, on a tiptoe, she's finding it super tough to start. I think she's not gonna make it the way she's doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, oh, she does not make it, dude. Oh no, we've seen this before. Oh my god. I think it's a little bit uh, too mean of the root setters. I think rest setters should let them climb. But I do like the drama. <laughs> I do like the fact that you have to be careful and like switched on the whole way. Maybe that move kind of uh, surprised shorter climbers. But Nasuki Tani is a really, really strong climber, but she's extremely, extremely not tall, <laughs> to put it lightly. Let's see how she does this problem. Um, I think she did do very well in the lead IFSC competitions, and she's only like 17 or 18. And she's one of the strongest lead climbers, female lead climbers. So let's see how she figures this, figures this out. It's almost like a boulder problem for the start. Oh no. I, oh, let's see if she can do it. Oh, she does it. She's strong. Oh, that's so good. Okay, the difference there was that she really had tension from her right hand, of the holding the slope up and the right foot. And I think she just matched the timing a lot better. Well, I guess, uh, you know, shorter climbers can do that problem. She looks quite good. I think she she can go far. I don't think she'll be able to top Nasuki Tani. Ooh, just a little bit of a stretch for her over there. Yeah, because she is kind of smaller. Uh, not super smooth on the foot placement there, but I think, you know, we can forgive that. She seems to be able to be okay. Yeah, she's not very confident with that foot matches. Maybe she's a little bit nervous, um, but, you know, she's... She is climbing pretty quick. Uh, I guess the right heel. I think with this method, you don't have to cut loose. Wow! Yeah, she finds a method 
So not to be able to cut loose. Oh, her heel is kind of precarious position though. That's uh, just a lot of trust in that left heel. I don't know about you, but I always pop off those sloppy heels. <laughs> so this is amazing to watch. That is not easy. I think with the, because of the soft shoes, she's able to kind of curl her toes to get the maximum of pressure on that heel. Oh, she doesn't really choose to kind of rest there. I think she climbed a little bit slow in the beginning section and she's a little bit worried that um, you know, she might not be able to uh, progress to the top. But yeah, at the pace she's going and the fact that she didn't rest there for too long tells me that she's aiming to go very high but not to top. Um, so, interesting decision from her. I hope that's not the case. Okay, she has to kind of find a way to traverse down here through this tricky section. Ooh, a little bit. Oh, a little bit dynamic there, but she makes it look super smooth. It's two minutes on the clock. She is past the halfway point, so um, she is looking pretty good here to get into good position to score. But she is just only approaching the sloper. Whoa, okay, wow, she manages to twist her body into that sloper. I'm, I wonder why Futaba Ito wanted to kind of push off that and kind of commit to that. Asuki Tani, even though she's shorter, found a very solid way to approach the sloper. Gets this left toe hook in to keep your heels and hips into the wall to make sure the sloper is nice and good. Beautiful climbing over here. Asuki Tani reading this perfectly. Oh, she's a bit struggling here with the right hand. Uh, it is a big move to the next hold and she oh, she barely catches it. Oh my goodness. Come on, Asuki. I think this must be the high point. And she's dragging her left across. She does have one minute on the clock. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. But the question is, can she get high enough that Aimori can't catch her? And she has to find a way to get across. This is a blind hook. Oh, oh, that's a blind shot to the holes there. I'm not sure if you can call those holes. Those are like a tiny, tiny, small pebbles. That's a blind move because you can see the little chalk marks underneath the volume to kind of tell the climbers where they are. But, oh, that, that's really close. But that's a really, really good score for Natsu Kitani. Is that enough though? Now, the climber of the hour, I Mori, the defending champion, the world champion, the combined women's finals champion. She's the favorite to win almost every, oh well, Inyakamura is pretty good, but she's a lead specialist. And she should be able to. Well, she has beaten Yanya Gamre twice already last year. Uh, and she's already having doubts about the start. So, yeah, we've seen all the short climbers have doubts at the start. We don't want to see Ayamori slip here and fall because that would be disastrous. That would be absolutely. She's on the tippy toes and she has to be really careful because once she releases that right toe, um, she'll be considered starting. And she's <laughs> looking at the, the judges and saying, like, What is this dude? She's going with the right foot method. Oh, she knows it's a little bit janky. Oh, she's really trying to take her time. She has to be super careful here, yeah, but she has to commit. Oh, she... Okay, she gets all oh, she gets started. Oh my god, I was... I was... I was... Oh man. If she fell right there, that would have been a very, very short women's finals. But I'm glad she didn't and we get to see her climbing. Now the question is, can she defend her gold? Will she be able to defend her title? She has to kind of swing down here. No problem for her. Of course, you know, Miho Nanaka and Futabito didn't really have a problem there. But Aimori, you know, just making sure she's she's diligent. She did spend like some time with some finger strength hanging off there, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects her uh, throughout the rest of the climb. Uh, but she's under the crimpy squadra uh, yellow section here. Let's see how she navigates. She shouldn't have any problems here, but she looks she's she looks, she looks like she's going very very carefully. Oh, this is really. Oh, she's that okay. That's really good climbing because she waits until her body and hips are right under that crimp before moving out. Big mistake that most climbers do, especially myself. <laughs> we tend to rush that kind of move, for you, whereas you've got to be super patient. you got to tank the cream, get your body, your weight right under the cream, uh, and then you can start to uh, think about moving right. Uh, because if you don't, you might have extra momentum and excess weight that might 
cause you to swing out and talk because of the talk that's created by your body so um, let's see how she deals with this she's going uh whoa she's going with the toe hook first wow she's so confident in her toe hook oh my goodness she's so confident in her toe hook she's making her feet look like hands she doesn't have like she doesn't have two hands she has four hands and two feet and her feet are like hands too so she she almost has like six limbs the way she's climbing she's incredible what she does she does Whatever she does, she's always different than other climbers, and that's why she's so interesting to watch. She should be milking this rest, knowing I, Mori, she should be really taking her time here. Um, doesn't seem like too disturbed by her uh, dangling left foot. I think she prefers this way. She gets to kind of like solidify her right heel a little bit better. Um, but it does seem that she might want to milk this heel toe cam first. But, okay, she seems to be grabbing. Wow, very, very strong static style. Locking off hard with the right hand. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, let's see how she deals with this section. Pockets shouldn't be a problem for her. She usually likes to hold on to block crimps with just two fingers anyway. She is, yeah, she is concerned with the time. Looking back at the clock, she has a, a minute, 20 seconds to go. And she is nowhere near Miho, Miho's point yet. She's nowhere near Natsuki Tani's uh, high point yet. So she should have time to be able to at least maybe match Natsuki Tani's time. Ah, oh, that's the toe hook. Okay, so Futaba Ito did not really see the toe hook there. Whereas I'm already Natsuki Tani and forced the toe hook first. They kept the hips underneath, close to the wall, making that sloper section. A lot easier to hit. Oh, very good. Come on, Aimori. She's a little bit off balance. She needs to find something with her right foot. Decides to step across. Wow, she goes static to that hole. Oh my goodness. The what? She's, yeah, she's looking at the time. She only has 30 seconds to get the top. She should barely have enough time. But I think ooh, she might be a little bit rushing here. She's really picking up the pace. Let's see if she can grab this, and this should be almost a higher point. This is matching. Oh, beautiful! She goes. Oh my god, what is she holding onto? Those are not holes, those are like just textures. Oh, she even bounced her right foot. Oh my god, come on, nine seconds to go. Can she make the top? <laughs> oh, dude. Yo, that was close, dude. That was so close. I don't think she ha would have enough time if she did make that, but she, she defends her title. She is the Japan bouldering. No, Japan League climbing champion. And Aimori does it again. Yeah, we can see here. Nasuki Tani tried to go dynamic here, but Aimori was so strong enough. I don't know what she's holding on with that left hand. I have no idea. There's a complex right toe hook underneath there. That makes her stabilize her body against that left sloppy feet. She tries to smear, but I think that, oh, that move is so disgusting. 